In this video, I'm going to show you what I've done differently this year to improve the cold protection of my sensitive fruit trees. I'm also going to use a couple of these data loggers to get real world data about how the cold protection is performing. So I changed things up a little bit this year. I went to tripods instead of hoops and the main instigator of that was the availability of these little tripod connectors at my local big box store. So if you're in Australia, Bunnings sell these. Makes it really easy to just make a little tripod. Basically, I bang some Rio in the ground, slide the pipes over that or the conduit over that. Actually, this is PVC plumbing pipe, um, but you could use conduit. So slide that over the reinforcement bar, connect it at the top with these connectors. I don't glue these together. They're just um, a bit hard with one hand. They're just put together under a bit of spring tension, which is plenty to hold it together. Ugh. Very difficult with one hand. Uh, they stay together fine, and that means I can take them down really easily at the end of the at the end of the season. I then use the two meter wide frost cloth. Now you have to get heavier stuff, and you can get heavier than this. The heavier, the better, because you're only using it temporarily overnight, or at least I am. And then during the night or just in the afternoon, I wrap this over and around the tree using these small connectors, which I'll just grab. And so then I just pull it over and connect it with these clamps. Now, if you saw my last video, these clamps are basically irrigation pipe with a slot cut in them and just cut into three to four centimeter sections. And you can use it, you just clamp them on and they'll hold the frost cloth on overnight. So I'll quickly show you how I do that for a tree of this size. This is a star apple or chimedo. Um, and so these are the, the main size cold frames I use. Once they get bigger than this, I tend not to worry about it. There are some trees like the jackfruit just behind me, which I made a larger tripod for. So I'll cover this one for another year. Um, interestingly, something else you can do to aid with the cold protection is put in some uh, water holding device. So this is a, a big container full of water. That'll really help steady the temperature over the night and uh, stop it dipping below zero. It only does that once or twice a year here, but um, this protection's yeah, enabled me to get my trees up and off the ground to, and my larger trees handle the cold fine. So that's the aim. That's what it looks like. I'll show you how I put it on. So I'm going to use these data loggers and we can compare the temperature under the cover and the temperature out in the open. I'll attach the second one to the fence. So that's one just here. Yep. So number two attached just there. And I'll just attach this second one over on the fence. So that's now recording and I'll hold the button down on this one too to start recording. Alright, so they're both now recording. Um, I'll quickly show you how I put the covers on and then we'll come back tomorrow and see how it went. It's actually not forecast to be too cold tonight, but you'll see hopefully the difference. I make these so I can do it really quickly. Now, this isn't something you want to do if you're actually farming these species and you have hundreds of trees, but for the small number of trees I've got, a couple of clamps and maybe 15 minutes daily, five to 10 minutes in the morning, five to 10 minutes in the afternoon, I can cover the trees that are really in danger. I d it's not something I expect to have to do forever. It's just for the first few years to get them through. We'll come back tomorrow and see how these two fared. Alright, I've j just taken the covers off all the trees and I'll stop these recorders now. We can have a quick look at what they're recording currently. Uh, it's about 7.30 in the morning, 4.4 degrees. So I think I just hold it down to stop recording. Let's see how it's done. Alright, stop. And so we'll quickly look the one over here on the fence, 4.1 degrees. So only a little difference at 7.30 in the morning, but we'll um, 
we'll compare the data and see how they went overnight. So let's go do that. Quick disclaimer, I've run a whole bunch of these tests since I filmed this. And so what I've done in terms of the data you're about to see, I've chose a representative sample. I've done a bunch of tests. I've actually lost a bunch of data. I'm not sure I still have the data from this very first test that I've filmed. Um, some have better results, some have worse results than what you're about to see. So I've just chosen an average. Something I did notice on the way through, if it's a really windy night, uh, you will get a much closer temperature between the outside and the inside of the cover. But on a windy night, you never get a frost, or at least not in my climate. So that's not a concern. Anyway, now that you know that, let's go and have a look at the data. I'm really impressed with these little data loggers. Uh, they've been really easy to work with. So I just found them on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Um, I can't endorse them beyond the few times I've tried them. And obviously, I have tried this quite a few times now. You're seeing one on camera. Uh, but I've run about five or six of these tests so far. Uh, they've been really good for what I'm trying to do. They're actually sold as a um, food truck thermometer. So you can put them with you know food that's being transported and see if it went into the danger zone in terms of if it got too warm, etc. Uh, which is, I'd, I'd never even thought of that. So I thought that was pretty interesting when I found out. So anyway, back to the data. Um, here we have, on the left, we have the tree that was undercover. Now let me get this right. On the right, we have the tree that was under the cover. And on the left, we have um, the, the data logger that was out in the open. And so to compare the two, so under the cover, the average temperature was 7 degrees Celsius. Now for our Fahrenheit friends, that's 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And with no cover, it was 6.1 degrees Celsius, so 42.98 degrees Fahrenheit. So a difference of just over a degree Celsius or two degrees Fahrenheit between the two. So not a huge difference, uh, but certainly a difference. Now, if we head over and look at the minimum temperature the two data loggers experienced, it was 1.6 degrees Celsius out in the open, which is 34.88 Fahrenheit. And it was only 2.7 under the cover, so 36.86. Now, we do get to freezing here, which is actually what these covers are to avoid. Try and stop us dipping into that freezing zone with some of my more sensitive trees. Um, but generally, the temperature I start to put the covers on around, uh, because it could dip into that freezing zone, is when it's forecast to be below 3 degrees Celsius, which is truly only a few times a year, but for those few times I need it. And so I thought I'd compare the time spent under 3 degrees Celsius here, just to have a look at, yeah, they get to a similar, you know, only a bit over a degree difference in the, the low point, but how long do they spend at those lower temperatures? And so if you compare the three, uh, the hours under three degrees Celsius, so with no cover, it's three and a half hours or even a bit more that it was that the data logger was experiencing temperatures below three degrees Celsius. Again, for our Fahrenheit friends, that's 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> but under the cover, it was only one and a half hours. So that's the most important figure to me. It's spending a lot less time at those lower temperatures. Is this temperature difference worth it? Well, for me it is. And with the added fact that there's a cover over the trees and the frost doesn't form, it gets my tr most sensitive trees that I grow through that, that those cold nights. Something to take away from this is you're not gonna work miracles. So if you're in a marginal climate, this is certainly something to look at, but you're not gonna grow tropical trees in a temperate climate using this method. So it's only gonna get you a couple of degrees. So if there's only a couple of nights a year that you've really got to worry about. So if you're in, you know, central Florida is the place that comes to mind, warm most of the year with just a really few cold nights. This could be a suitable solution for there. But really, I want you to try it because I actually thought it had a bigger effect than it did. Um, and it, it works here, so no harm done. But I'd be a little bit disappointed if I'd spent all this effort and, and a bit of money too putting this together only to find out it, it wasn't getting me uh, the results I needed. So do if you're going to try it, just set one up. Um, see if you can scrounge some data loggers or even just see how your tree performs if you're only, only testing one tree, see how it goes and see if it's right for your climate. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. 
something I'm doing here. <laughs> if you look back through my videos, you'll see it's changed every year. I think I deleted the first one because I was kind of embarrassed with what I did back then. But you can look back at what I was doing last year and that worked okay. And it's evolved again this year and it's gotten a little bit better. And um, I'm going to do it again next year and it'll probably evolve again. And after that, I'm only going to be doing it to the odd tree that I introduce in an open area because most of my trees by that stage should be big enough for the cold we experience here. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Have a good one.